was always an effort like going out oh not again I have to go and go say hi to these people that not so long ago made fun of me because of the mere fact that Dimnyama compared to them I like to be fair I don't like my, my complexion like a black person we um currently concentrating on skin lightening and the the aspect of skin lightening across disciplines i think it's been going on for for longer than than we care to realize because it probably started pre apartheid era so very much in the 1950s already people were were producing skin lighteners they were using skin lighteners it was part of the colonialism and the whole western ideal of beauty was still um going on and there were no TVs in that time so most of the publications were um in the newspapers and in um in magazines and there is different motivations for why people attempt to use these skin lightener creams uh some of them the women i've been interviewing and talked to they tell me that it's because of their self esteem and they want to be beautiful and feel lighter and have smooth skin like what they see in the advertisements and what they see in the media and in the movies and tv shows a good example is maxim magazine which is a, a large men's magazine internationally and they're releasing a list of the hottest 100 women of the year every year and this list Rihanna is the only non-white person on the top 20 which is quite interesting or mostly but is using skin lightening products as well is also a, a product of concern because most youngsters you know they associate with them because they see them as their role models that in a drive to to be successful to be beautiful to be to be looking like a celebrity that psychosocial aspect is probably what is driving this this cosmetic cosmetical market into the billions every year for me i look the light skin people like they are beautiful so when i decided to be like to change my color yeah i like to be more beautiful than what i was before for me now growing up was tough cuz when i started primary school i know i know it looks shame but like they always would come into my face and be like ten nya maganga ka when and i'm like really and i would obviously go back to the mirror and look at myself i am actually the nya manya but then because of them lying to me saying how ugly i am and the fact that in the college school they call me um habrana pana cook cuz then i would be the dog cuz in the class like I, i was in a college school again and those are the the, the words that been called to me like yeah i'm a kafir or i'm just negativity towards the fact that i am black and yes i am black and i love it you know when i was black i didn't like it when i i always admire a light person so i went up to one sister one day i say what can i use to become like you so he, the girl laughed he said you want to be like me i say yes i always like to be a fair person so he introduced me to to many products i've been using it for more than 8 years the damage to the skin is probably related to the compounds that that actually exist within these creams the the predominant one we know by now is is hydroquinone hydroquinone is is a polyphenolic it's a it's a very potent um compound that can that can seep into the skin that can damage the cells in the upper layers of the skin and actually over the long term will kill those cells and and thus damage the skin almost irreparably we don't know as yet whether long term use of these creams on your skin can can lead to cancer and so our over the next couple of months and 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 year we, we plan to look at whether these compounds that we've now isolated that we know are in large amounts in the skin we can now expose these compounds to the skin cells and actually look at whether over time they actually have cancer forming effects and so you you need to know that normally a cream exists with an insert which is the piece of paper that they insert with with the cream when you buy it for the first time in a box and and it is that insert that normally gives the ingredients of the cream and normally tells you how to apply it generally the creams that we have on the market on the local markets on the at the station markets etc do not have those inserts and and so it's a little bit suspicious 
starting from now, from from the the roots, you know, from go be banging. Let them know when they wake up. You know, are you beautiful? Even though we enjoy in color, you know, you are simply on that alone. Um, motivate them, you know, and for them to feel comfortable in their own skin. Like I said, it's gonna be a challenge here. Um, because you find kids when I look look at them, they're outside. It's almost like they're already being treated like aliens. Fikomi would take a stick and be shoving. No, it's happened really. I looked at her, I was like, you really shoved him in the face with a stick. And the other one had like a nice pair of tackies and wanted to kick him. And I knew I've been there. I know how it feels like, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm like, and you can't help it. What I want from this research is to make the society more aware of how much power the media and how they are presenting beauty can affect women on the street. That women can actually go that far to put on damaging creams on their skin to become more beautiful and what media is representing as the perfect. I would hope that that the public themselves become aware of the consequences of potential long-term use of a cream that does not have information. But the end point is still that person standing in front of the shelf looking at the creams and deciding to buy it. Beauty does not come from the outside, it comes from within. Okay, most people say that it's a cliche, but in actual fact, I don't think, it's, I don't think so. Okay, so start by accepting yourself and being comfortable with yourself, and I think that's the step in the right direction. Mm -hmm.